the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the one God. Amen. Welcome back to our new episode on Pentecost. Today we will contemplate on five keys to living in the resurrection power. When we linger too long by an empty tomb, gazing in wonder at the empty grave clothes that mark the living Christ, we can get so lost in the euphoria of the empty tomb and the risen Christ that we miss the message. There is a great euphoria that surrounds this empty tomb. We find there is a risen Lord who through his death and resurrection has given us new life. That is truly something to get excited about, isn't it? The danger here at the tomb is never moving on. I experience an empty tomb in my life. The day that Jesus saved me, it was then that the empty tomb became real to me. My forgiveness, my redemption, my new life, my eternity, all caught up in the risen Lord. The problem is that for far too many, this is where it stops. For 40 days after his resurrection, Jesus went about the countryside, continuing his message. He met with small groups of the disciples and with as many as 500 people at one time teaching. It was during this time that Jesus taught one of our most valuable lessons, the lesson that transformed the disciples from scared rabbits into roaring lions who changed the world. Today's lesson is how to live in resurrection power. Some of the lessons obviously were learned by the day that Jesus ascended into heaven. Others he left with them that day, but let's look together at the lessons we need to learn to live in resurrection power. Living in resurrection power begins with obedience. Verse 16 says, The eleven went to the Mount of Olives as Jesus had instructed them to do. Notice that Jesus is not with them and yet they still obey. Have you noticed something about children? You tell them to do something, but you have to keep reminding them and you have to stay after them till it's completed. One sign of maturity is when you give your child a job and you know that they will complete it. No questions asked. Living in resurrection power comes not from knowing what God wants for you in life. It's in doing what he wants for your life. How often do we find ourselves not listening to God's commands? We know what we should do. We know what we are supposed to do. We know what God has commanded us to do, but we simply don't do it. James says, But prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely bearers who delude themselves. He will never know what it is to live in resurrection power until we decide to live in obedience to the call of Christ. Living in resurrection power centers around worship. Verse 17 says, These men had followed Jesus for three years. They had eaten with him, slept with him, ultimately denied him. Now they fall on their knees and worship him. Don't take this lightly. This is an acknowledgement on their part that Jesus is God. Worship is for no one else but God. God wants us to make that final decision in our lives. Is he God or isn't he? If he is not, then let's be done with all of this pretense. If he was only a prophet or a good man, then be done with it. If he is God, then let's stop playing in religious games and worship him, for he is worthy of our worship. Our power for living centers in our worship of God as God. Not slaving away for the false gods of our days, gods of materialism, popularity or power, real power, resurrection power, power for life and living centers in worship. But some doubted. St. Paul says, after that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain in the present, but some have fallen asleep.
resurrection power finds its foundation in submission. And verse 18 says, Jesus says that all authority is given to him. Folks, if he has the authority, we only have a choice, submit or rebel. Those are only choices. One of those choices leads to power for living. The other leads to disappointment and death. Which one will you choose? Mark's Gospel tells the story of a rich young man who came to Jesus. What shall I do to inherit eternal life, he asked. I have kept the commandments of Moses, what shall I do? Jesus told him to sell his possessions and give to the poor. His face fell, despondent. That is the one thing he could not do. He wanted redemption, he wanted the good stuff, but was unwilling to submit to the lead the Lordship of Christ. What are you still holding on to? What part of your life do you still control? I want to tell you, it's all His in reality. None of it is ours. Resurrection power finds purpose in disciple making. And verse 19, understand this night that this is where the rubber meets road. Those who stand staring at the cross never make it here. Those who stand gazing at an empty tomb never reach this point. But those who follow Christ understand that this is why he came. This is his directive to us, make disciples. The world is full of those who would condemn Christians for trying to convert Jews and atheists to Christ. Let me tell you something. If you're a Christian, and you're not doing these things, you have missed the message. This is what resurrection power is for. Jesus didn't come so that you could be happy, successful or rich. He came so that you could live with him for eternity. And not only you, but all mankind on this earth. Sharing our faith, why? Six reasons. For sharing our faith in Christ with those who have not experienced new life in Christ. Because God has commanded us to do so. In the final, final words of Jesus while on earth was in Acts 1.8. What is the purpose of this power? Listen to the words of Jesus. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. Because it also demonstrates our love to God. Christ said that if we truly love him, we would keep his commandments in John 14, 15. Because all are lost, for we have all fallen to sin. Also because our sharing is God's chosen method to tell all people. He could have used angels, but he didn't. Only redeemed sinners can tell lost sinners about Christ. And St. Paul says to the Romans, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Another point is, because God desires to save all people. And Peter mentions, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Because someone shared his faith with us, for instance, faithful Bible teacher, priest, a parent, a servant, or a person off the street, or even a stranger. 
You have been empowered for a purpose. Disciple making, no longer just letting others disciple you, feeding off the generosity of others. You are called to take responsibility to be a part of God's plan and purpose. There is a world full of lost people who need to know what you know, that salvation is a freely given gift ready for them. The resurrection power finds its source in fellowship with Christ. In verse 20, Jesus reminded his disciples that through the entire tough times, all the trials, all the temptation, all the labor that he has with them, resurrection power does not find its source in religious observance. Christianity finds its greatest pinnacle in following fellowship with the living God. I am with you always, he said. How long has it been since you were with Jesus? Well, that's all we have for you today. God bless you and we hope to see you in a new episode on Pentecost.